<clears throat> this is uh, Andrew Gold. We were watching him earlier. That's, uh, the title of this video is a little bit weird. It says, uh, ex-Scientologist and YouTuber found dead at 50. My strange experience with him. What a weird thing to title your video. Right? Because um, um, a man is dead. He's a nice guy. I like Doug. So, RIP uh, Doug Kramer. I haven't watched this video yet. Uh, the people in the SPTV Discord said that the video was uh, a bit unsettling. And uh, we're going to check it out. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more about this on uh, Catterday because there was no... Um, Shasta Board of Soups meeting this week. So let's let's let this roll. This is uh, Andrew Gold. Probably going to say some probably pretty inappropriate things about the, the, the sky. Well, this is probably not going to be great. This is a very sad day, or yesterday was a very sad day. Today remains uh, that day. I'm sure a lot of you know this already, and some don't, but unfortunately it appears as though ex-Scientologist and popular YouTuber Doug Scott Kramer has been found dead, um, I believe, in his apartment in California. Doug was a very popular member of the ex-Scientologist community. Uh, as a Scientologist, he got pretty, pretty far, to be fair. Um, but there was a sense with Doug, and by the way, we don't know what the cause of death is, was and so let's speculate wildly about it we can but speculate but he was oh young. but you or you could just not you could just not actually you could not speculate about how how, how someone passed away who you don't even fucking know you could not speculate that'd be good right you can not speculate about this i certainly didn't he was 50. He looked a lot younger than that. Um, and Doug uh, clearly struggled in a way, in my dealings with him, in a way that, you know, all Scientologists, all ex-Scientologists, all ex-cult members struggle in different ways. But the way in which Doug struggled was immediately uh, apparent. And we don't know what happened, but... Uh, I don't really believe in beating around the bush and saying, you know, whatever. It's it's very possible that he took his own life. We might never know. Oh, oh, we're going to speculate. Uh, turns out this is not the case. But uh, wait, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, wait, uh, and then and then wait to like not take this video down. Just what, what a massive piece of shit this guy is. We're fucking a minute and 30 into this. What a massive piece of shit this guy. Fuck this guy. Uh, we had this with a, a former guest, Jesse Morton, who was a former radicalized is Islamist who uh, later repented and left and was about the same age as Doug when he uh departed this planet unfortunately and we never really got to the bottom of that either so often these things are not um ever really cleared up but if you're just joining now uh i would re just reiterate and um that doug was found dead for several weeks uh his family were not able to get hold of him no not several weeks it was a week and it's very sad because this was a man with a lot of joy, um, potential joy and energy in his soul. And a lot of it was just sucked out of him by the cult of Scientology. And this is yet another example. Now, no dignity in death because of your ass. Fuck you. Fuck you. Where they have blood on their hands because they took someone's soul from them no no this is incorrect this was incorrect nobody knew and this motherfucker is like oh that's a, my professional opinion this man took his own life fuck you my fucking god 
Fuck you. And they took his life. No, uh, the cult of Scientology did not uh, take his life. And it's really sad. And it's sad for a lot of people. I had an actually very complicated relationship with Doug, uh, which I'll get into. We interviewed him, I think, what, once, maybe twice. I didn't have a relationship with Doug. He was Facebook friends with me. I, I liked him. I hooked him up with the uh, Silicon Valley Skeptics Group to give a talk on Scientology. They're not a complicated relationship. Well, I don't know. Motherfucker, this guy lives like on another continent. Uh, it's something I don't entirely understand, even looking back. And Doug said some things that I found very hurtful. And I said something. Oh, fucking... Fuck, uh, fuck, I hope Doug told this guy to go fuck himself, honestly. Well, I mean, that, that Doug would. That's what we liked about him, actually. Things that I don't know if he found hurtful, but he just brushed them off. But he was clearly dealing with a lot, and you know, I knew that then, and I, we know it now. <clears throat> There's a great little um, piece by Tony Ortega, on the underground bunker. Uh, oh, where Tony did not wildly speculate about the cause of death of this, this man. But don't worry, Andrew Gold was here to do it. Read a bit of that, but he says that during his coverage, or I'm reading it out, during our coverage of the Danny Masterson trials, one of the best experiences we had was being interviewed by Doug Scott Kramer, a former Scientologist and actor who had operated his dazed but not confused YouTube channel for several years. We first wrote about Doug in 2021, featuring one of his videos, and in more recent days, he had been basing a lot of his videos on our reporting, that's the Underground Bunker, and giving the Underground Bunker credit. We thought he was doing very good work, had a unique voice, and we were glad to know him. Sadly, we heard from a friend of the family that Monday evening, Doug was found unresponsive in his bed in his studio city home. He had died at the age of 50, and no cause has been listed yet at the county medical examiner's office and may not for some time. In his videos, Doug had talked about his father introducing him, the family, to Scientology when Doug was about nine and that he was firmly a member of the organization by the time he was 19. He reached the level of OT3, that's Operating Thetan Level 3, which contains the story about Xenu, the galactic overlord, and Doug often cite it, cited it as one of his strangest experiences in the organization. At 33, Doug said he had given, been given a copy of Steve Hassan's book, Combating Cult Mind Control, by a friend, and he said it opened his eyes about Scientology, eventually helping him decide to leave. Meanwhile, he had pursued a career in acting and had landed guest roles on television shows such as Nip Tuck and American Heiress. He said that acting classes had put him in proximity of other Scientology-involved actors, and he talked about the way Scientology caters to them. He also spoke about the ways that Scientology's indoctrination was so insidious. He said... Scientologists in general aren't inherently evil or bad people or anything, far from it. Usually they are decent people who are unknowingly brainwashed, as harsh as that may sound. And there's a world of difference between the two, in my opinion. That's something that Doug wrote on an Ask Me Anything on Reddit. And the key feature about being brainwashed, he continued, is you won't be able to detect that within yourself and will dismiss it and laugh off the notion entirely. But it doesn't change the facts of the situation they are in. Hubbard was first and foremost an expert hypnotist. This is what keeps people from being able to snap out of it, perceive the obvious and leave. Tony writes, we're glad that Doug did get out and that he educated so many people. And he's just reading somebody else's article about this too. Fuck you. The dangers of Scientology. Uh, one former Scientologist, Tammy Sinovec, says, I'd known him since he was a teenager. I was his ethics officer. He was a handful. He grew into a very intelligent adult. When he explained Scientology to people, he did a lot to expose the damage it does. Another Scientologist, Marcus Sawyer, has said, I loved Doug like a brother, and yes, sometimes we fought like brothers. I have that experience myself with Doug. Uh, yeah, but you didn't love, like, shut the fuck up. You did not have the I love you like a brother, but we fought like brother. I'm fucking 100% sure now that Doug told this fucking asshole to go fuck himself. For much the same reason I think this guy can go fuck himself. That's what I'm getting from this. You didn't fight like brothers. Fuck off. 
He continued though, Marcus, I believe we did help people breaking down how the TRs can induce trans, trans, sorry, states, and we celebrated being wrong about- We got trans on the brain, do you? And we were in. Hmm. We will miss him, finishes Tony. Huh. Um, as I say, this is a very sad occasion. This is certainly an example of Scientology having blood on its hands. Of course, many- No- wild speculation about a man you didn't know thought like brothers dude you you y'all weren't y'all weren't friends I, I get the impression that the doug i'm telling you doug probably told this guy to go fuck himself and again <clears throat> just this guy like just run out there wilding out saying what he thinks happened this this whole anti-Scientology community is full of these fucking garbage-ass people. Mental health issues. If that is what happened, I am speculating. I'm making a massive leap, a massive assumption. No, you're being a, a massive douche. Um, and and so may that fall on me. Let, let, let the whatever fall, let the cards fall where they may if I'm wrong. Um, but that's where I'm going with this. I remember when I spoke to him... Uh, and that video did phenomenally. Uh, I, I had a video called, uh, it was the 155th episode of my podcast back when I was calling it On The Edge podcast. Ex-Scientologist reveals the truth about Scientology and Tom Cruise. And we had uh, a fascinating chat, often as Doug liked to do about MK Ultra and the Mancurian can Manchurian candidates, is that how pronounced? I'm not sure. Indoctrination, um, the pro progression of evil, uh, OSA, mind control techniques. He did bull baiting on me. Uh, I'm looking at it now, uh, the video I did. Uh, it was back when I was chubby. And it's just a funny thing to think of and how long ago it was. I was, had a quite a chubby face. Um, and it's sad to see him there. Well, as long as it's about you. No, no. But he did a whole bull baiting thing on me where he said all manner of things. He didn't call me fat or anything like that, but he tried to say horrible things to show me what it would be like to experience bull baiting, which is when you just have someone stare at you and say horrible things for a long time. We talked about Xenu, multiple personality disorders. We talked about the placebo effect, atheism and spirituality. He did not understand my stance as an atheist. We talked about Heaven's Gate and we talked about Tom Cruise. But interesting on atheism and spirituality, he just, he couldn't get it. He was just going, I just don't get your thing. I don't get it. He really believed. And I hope that's served him well in, you know, the, the final moments. I don't know if that's just quite a glib or facetious or vacuous thing to say. I don't know what- uh, It is, yeah. This is all glib, facetious, vacuous. Those are, those are mild words for what this motherfucker is doing here. Mild, mild words. Ooh, 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 I hate, I fucking hate people like this. I hate this. I bet Stephen Mango's video is even worse, even more uh, anger inducing. That really means it's just me reaching for words to describe him, but he was, you know, and to, to, to spin something positively because this was a man who had a tremendous uh, belief in some higher power and I hope he's being looked after now by that higher power I don't believe in well firstly God uh, but but many of my viewers and things do you guys are welcome to and I, I respect it and I respected Doug for it I also don't believe in venerating the dead to such an extent that we start to bend truth and only Oh no. You remember positive. I think it doesn't actually, I think it does a disservice to firstly their memory as, as rounded people who were affected by things like cults, for example, to say, oh, this was an angel with a perfect life and everything like that. After what he'd been through in Scientology doesn't do justice to what that cult can do to people. He was somebody who struggled. And as those other Scientologists allude to was not always the easiest to get on with, but then who among us are? And we got on fine with Doug. I thought I was getting on with him uh, brilliantly. And back in October 2022, I've got some Instagram messages here from him. 
<clears throat> and it all came out of the blue. Oh no, you're gonna read if this dude if this dude reads a dead man's DM to him on fucking Instagram, I'm just gonna start I'm gonna y'all are gonna have to buy me new shit for my studio. I'm gonna lose my fucking shit right about now. Because we were getting on so well, and every time we did a video together, it was getting nearly a million views. There was something about a connection that Doug and I had together. Uh, and, you know, October 2022, uh, he's saying, stoked to hear your interview with HG that you're putting out in a couple of days. I said, it's, it's a good one. And he said, awesome. After watching it, awesome interview with HG. No matter the content of these, these are private messages that somebody who is now dead sent you. Imagine that. <clears throat> I rate lump. I've DM'd with you. You're, you're chatting. You're the last person in chat. I think we've DM'd. If, if uh, you found out that I had passed and then you like went onto YouTube and read our private fucking messages. Like, imagine doing that. HG, so he liked what I'd done with HG Tudor. Uh, Doug also did stuff with HG Tudor. I said, thanks, mate. Can't wait for the next one with you. Uh, that was the 21st of October, getting on really, really well. He was always messaging and emailing and saying, well done, really liked your latest episode. This was great. That was great. Um, it's going to take a twist here. And I didn't see it coming at all. Um, That's because but... you're you're a piece of shit, Andrew. And like, you're a piece of shit. And so I think he figured out that you're a piece of shit. He and I and H.G. Tudor, the narcissistic psychopath who's anonymous on screen, just a black whatever, but who tells us about all these things and who's narcissistic in Scientology and Tom Cruise and all of these things. Um, we were going to do a three-way, a three-way interview. And for whatever reason, H.G. Tudor cancelled uh, fairly late notice. Like, go not maybe he watched your channel. <laughs> He's like, listen, man, I'm a, I'm a narcissist, but I want to go on this motherfucker's channel but just fairly late notice. And this is November, 2022. So over a year ago now, and Doug wrote, uh, and this, this hurt me, but he wrote, hi mate. I got the message about HG Tudor needing to reschedule. I think it's best we scrap that if you wouldn't mind, as I'm feeling less comfortable about this of late. I'm not sure exactly how to word this without sounding judgmental or mean, but my concern is this. I tried to expose Scientology as a serious thing and as a serious detriment to people's lives. And I can joke around about it like the next person. But the kind of videos you have put up recently about Scientology seem to cheapen that, at least for me personally, and it rubs me the wrong way. I don't want to associate my message, for lack of a better term. Listen, if I pass on... Please don't go on YouTube and read the DMs I sent you. And what I've worked so hard on over the last couple of years with that kind of stuff. To simply have the subject matter reduced down to how many views or a salacious title isn't something I want to support. I hope no offense is taken, dude. This is just the way I feel. Wish you the best. So... I replied just saying, uh, I'm really shocked to hear that. Uh, and, you know, I did say, you know, given that your channel uh, is is full of videos that aren't your own and, and also have the same salacious titles and things, I was really surprised to hear it. Anyway, I think you're a beautiful person. I love what you do. Much love, Andrew. And then he wrote, I am a fan and will continue to watch your work, bro. And I really do like you and your style of interviewing a lot. But I don't feel it's any of my business to tell you what you should or shouldn't do uh, with your content. It's your channel and you should do as you see fit. Uh, but I'm sure you could see how I personally might respond to such an approach is all I'm trying to get across. Um, it was me who actually emailed HG and asked if I could bow out. No one, no one else and blah, blah, blah. That's the only point and the only concern. I'm sorry to hurt you, dude. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know we sort of made amends and it was fine. We didn't ever do a video together after that. I was really, really hurt. And I did feel like I, I didn't really understand because like I say, I, I saw that his channel 
in my mind, was far more clickbaity. And, and he was using other people's video. I don't mean to speak ill of the dead. Because uh, but, 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 but you just... It's, that, Okay. You just read personal correspondence of somebody who died or who who died or whose body was found like less than 24 hours ago. Like you read personal correspondence because I do think he's a wonderful person but it's part of the story so I hope you're patient with what I'm trying to say here. Um, he was using other people's videos to profit and his channel eventually got shut down. Um, and then I would see his new channel and he had all these videos just, you know, with Tom Cruise in them and all this, the same stuff that he was upset with me about. And the reason this is important, I think, is I got very upset and I spoke to uh, a mutual friend of ours who I shouldn't really name, um, but who said to me, Andrew, you've got to, understand this is somebody who went through trauma and you'd think I would understand that it's one of those things that I think is easier maybe to understand when it happens to someone else it's easier to analyze from the sidelines uh when you're involved at least with me because I'm weak in that sense you know I, I need people to like me that's why I'm a youtuber and it was really really hard to get that from Doug because when you work in this industry you're on your own Right. And especially at that point, I now have a guest booker who I speak with quite often. But even so, it's like, you know, on the little WhatsApps and things, you don't sit in an office with people. So all you really have is your sort of YouTuber friends um, and you guys who watch. And well, no, they're not your friends. What the, what is this? Why, why, like, what, like, that's, those, those aren't, those aren't your, that's not your, that, that's some dude you did video. If you thought this was your friend, why are you reading personal correspondence that you had with them? Levin, I still have, um, who I speak with fairly often and we joke around and stuff. And that's really nice. And at that point I had, I didn't know Aaron very well yet. And I had Doug Scott Kramer and he was like a, a friend. Um, we didn't meet in person, but he was great fun to chat with. He was really cool, very different to anyone I know, very Californian. So I was just so hurt. And I had to have like a chat with a couple of other YouTube people and say, what what have I done? I don't understand. And they made me realize what I think I might have had the foresight to to tell them in that position or that this guy is going through trauma. And I needed to maybe support him and understand him a bit better. And that led us to get on okay, you know, after that. We didn't do anything again 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 after that, but I messaged him saying, hey, listen, you know, I was a bit emotional when you said that, but, you know, I think you're a good person. And he said some nice stuff, and that was that. But we never did a video together again. We hardly really spoke after that. Um, he sent a nice message, actually, just, just quite recently. Here, let me read more personal correspondence. Um, d -d 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 let me see. Sorry, um, what did he say recently? Oh yeah, just uh, setting me up with uh, Chris Malin, who I spoke to. He said, hi, Andrew, I trust all is good. With you, I interviewed an ex-Scientologist last week, Chris Malin, who spoke out for the first time and had an explosive story to share, including the UK covering up and protecting bad people. Aaron did a follow-up. I wanted to ask you if you would be interested in interviewing him on your channel. Due to the success you've achieved, brackets, great job, dude, and the reach you have, you could really help to spread this man's story. So I guess by the end, he didn't think badly. I don't know. Um, and he, he thought that my channel was for good. Um, I hope so. When, when I was doing stuff with him, I had like three or 4,000 subscribers. So by this point, it's 250,000. And maybe he saw what I was trying to do. I don't know. Um, Everyone who's worked with him has just good stuff to say about him. And this whole thing's sad. But it was, like I say, it, he helped me a lot because it was at the beginning of my journey into this world of podcasting. And he helped me to understand. And now to, you know, and I, and I already was giving duty of care. 
But it's one thing to give duty of care when you speak to someone who's been through a culty situation or trauma or something and to say like, hey, you know, you're... Uh, you're valued and everything. Are you okay? Are you sure you want this video to go out? Is there anything you want to change? That's like duty of care. It's very difficult to do that, especially at the beginning it was, when that person is criticizing you and you don't think there's a solid base for it or any reason for it and nothing makes sense. Well, hey, that's Scientology for you. That's what it does to people. And he was just so tormented um, and he had such a good heart or he didn't like what you were doing as much and didn't want to go on your fu fuck you. And I see that now. And I think actually going back through those messages and uh, given what's just happened, given that he's no longer with us, I was, I'm able to see it differently. And it's really sad. It's really, really sad. Uh, a lot of you guys I can see are just, you know, um, saying, you know, I don't know. Uh, that you're, you know, how sad this is. Some people are saying it wasn't the time for saying that story, and I, I appreciate that. I, I don't know when a better time. No, it's actually never the time when you have private correspondence with someone who is with us or who's no longer with us. It is never the time to reveal that private correspondence. There are exceptions to the situation, obviously, if someone's harassing you or uh, something like that, and you need to be able to prove that they were doing so. But this is not the case here. This is not one of those cases. This is like, like very insensitive and like very self-serving, like massive amounts of like hubris and like fucking misplaced sanctimony. When else am I going to start, you know, trying to understand Doug trying to understand Scientology and trying to understand what Scientology did to that man and what kind of different person he'd have been had he never fallen into that. That's something we don't know. We don't. Maybe, maybe he had his own issues otherwise because it's a cycle. Uh, I don't think it's as simple as Scientology ruins people. It's, you know, hurt people get into Scientology and Scientology makes them infinitely worse and then they get spat out the other side. So... Philosophy says Doug was the realest person on YouTube. He didn't talk shit. He didn't want anything. He genuinely wanted to help people. I think that's a really good point. And I, I, I think with my story about him getting upset with me, I thought he was wrong. But the point was he was speaking his truth. He was saying what he really felt. I think it was misguided and I, I think he wasn't quite, I don't know what he was thinking, but it was how he felt and he was upfront and honest with me. And he didn't drag it into the public domain or whatever problem he had. Um, and yeah, no, he was he was a very, very honest and, and righteous person. Um, Joe says, Andrew, it had more to do with you not being an ex-Scientologist. Doug's trust was very shaky. He liked you. Thanks, Joe. Wait, what? Well, yeah, I did wonder that. I wondered all these different things. Wait, what, what you know, the fuck? The, 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 huh? This at all. Should I ever be making videos about things when I'm not one of them? One of the things I learned quickly, and, and these things, obviously, they must seem obvious, right? But sometimes maybe I'm slow to stuff. I remember feeling that way with like ex-Hasidic Jews. I, I did a lot of videos with them. When I do videos with most people, I try to bond with them in ways where we sh we have common um, things in common. And I would try and speak to those Hasidic Jews in German because I'd learned German and they speak Yiddish. And some of them loved that, but some I could see- Wait, like what? I, I realized- You gotta be fucking kidding me. That was like the language of their trauma. I know that seems really obvious now. <laughs> oh my fucking god! No, no! Oh! Oh, no! Dude, 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 shut your YouTube channel down. Go talk to some people in the real world. My god. wasn't, and I didn't get it. I might even be wrong. I'm just, I'm supposing this because I saw some of the reactions weren't, they just didn't really go in with me. They were like, yep, yep, that's your German, that's German for you. I <laughs> So I, I met a Hasidic Jew 
and I speak German, so I just like, even though we both speak English and all our correspondence previous had been in English, I just started yapping at them in German. What? All things you have to learn as you go along. There's a very, very tight bond when you leave something and you are that in-group. And if other people try too hard to sort of act as if they're part of it, it can be jarring. And I know, look, I've been doing this for three or four years now, and I, I think I approach this with more grace and understanding. But when I started out, these were all things I had to learn. And you only learn by making mistakes. So thoughts, of course, to Doug's family. Um, Erica says, so sorry he was unable to reach out for someone to, to someone for help, if in fact it was self. Erica, shut the fuck up, Erica. It did, absolutely. Yeah, terribly sad. And maybe he did. And maybe it, it couldn't um it didn't yeah, let's, help. let's let's just let's just make up a fucking story now. Maybe he did. Maybe he tried to reach out to you, Andrew, but you were too busy thinking Fuck you. He, his death was not self-inflicted. So much we can do with, with broken people, particularly those who have been in such a devastating organization. Susie Q says, Doug was a lone wolf. He was not afraid to say whatever was on his mind. He was not worried about being ostracized once it was uh, as his choice to think critically and remain on the fringes a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> just a really difficult one um beach coma says andrew just needed to grow a pair he did and now he's more secure doug was on a mission and he didn't want anything standing in his way love him for what he did that's true but you know what i had such a beautiful time with him when we did record together we went into like the depths of humankind of, of what it is to be a human in a way that i wasn't able to do with many people that i talk with and for a long time, it felt really sad for me. You've got to remember, this was back when I didn't have many subscribers. And Doug was my friend. And I really enjoyed I was Even when we didn't record together, we messaged a lot, like just chatting completely. Oh, you should read more of them. Fucking asshole. And joking and laughing. So to... to I, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. I got more secure afterwards and I understood that that this is what happens and people have their issues and things like that. But what a shame that the last year and a month uh, we weren't able to keep making videos together uh, and doing what we loved together. But of course, we, we did so with, um, you know, in our own ways. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of people are just really sad. This is the beauty of YouTube. It brings us together and, you know, we're together for the good. Yeah, we get to get together and read the fucking private correspondences I had with somebody who passed away as I speculate as to their cause of death. Together for things we celebrated, even if they're things that are like the conviction of uh, Danny Masterson and certain people leaving Scientology and all of these things where we celebrate and, and are together. But there are the sad times as well. You know, and I'm I'm extremely fortunate that, I mean, what do I do? I got a friend sent me this uh, email about it today. Again, just for his anonymity, I, I won't say who, but. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, oh, that's fine, actually. You're not going to say who sent you the email. After all, they're alive. Ooh, ooh, you, you what, you, yo, fuck you. On who's, who's long been following this channel. And then, and I'm happy they sent it to me um because i needed to know you know but then you sit with your thoughts and you think well you know i don't want to make it about me but the thing is this enables us to i mean imagine if you just never heard anything and it's just like hang on what happened to oh what you know no 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 uh <clears throat> uh people who are interested in the matter uh read tony ortega's blog piece which was well written uh, lack speculation and uh maybe tony didn't publish any of the fucking email correspondence he had with doug you gigantic piece of shit so john says you're not the only person sorry oh shit nothing <laughs> um what was i thinking um 
let's see, I'm just scrolling down. What was I thinking? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't want to publish that person's Same correspondence, like public correspondence in your YouTube channel. People don't, I mean, look, we don't know that he took his own life. Well, I, look, but well no, you... Tell you is, like, you know, we know he was very up and down, even if that's not the case. So... Mel says, it's so hard to walk away from cults and to stop those behaviours which are ingrained by it. Same with all cults. Empathy, love, and understanding is the best thing we can give people. One, or you can just read their private correspondence with you and speculate wildly on the cause of their death if you Absolutely don't know. helped me with empathy and understanding. So, Sandra says, and I think this is for all of us, you know, Doug, he would never want you to feel as you are right now. He doesn't, we wouldn't want you feeling all uh, sad. So... No, but we don't yeah, all know. We, I, I I don't know him. We we interviewed him, and I, I exchanged some messages with him occasionally. He was a nice enough guy. Uh, funny enough, I'm not going to read any of those messages to you. You could imagine that. Ring says blow drill. Absolutely, it's not by forgetting; it's by remembering, uh, and that's why I wanted to bring up a lot of these these stories and just give an insight into the man, the man going through trauma. You know, the real man. I, I do. I just find that so boring. These tributes that are just like this person was a hero and a saint and that's it. And that was the only that's not humans. And I think, it, like I say, that would be giving such a disservice to a very complex person. Yes. Oh, that's, that's here's how we, we can honor him. We can uh, read our private correspondence with him. Yeah, vegan three. Anybody that lives alone should have someone checking on them daily. I used to wonder that when I lived alone, like, should I send a message like saying, okay, every few hours to someone? Because what if something happens to you? And that, we don't know, you know, we don't know what happened. Something could have happened. Let's see, I'll scroll down a little bit more. I'm happy that you guys, as well as me, get to have this chat. Um, let's see, let's see. Huh. Veronica Dean, I loved smoking with him through live streams. I like that. I don't smoke myself, but I think that's quite cool. That's what YouTube brings to the world. It's what mainstream TV can't bring. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, what it, what, it, what it brings to the world is giant pieces of shit like you who wildly speculate on someone's cause of death, get it wrong, and then just fucking read your fucking private correspondence with them. This is horrible. It's like one of the worst things I've ever seen anyone do. Like, what possesses you when you find out somebody you interviewed a couple times and had some uh, 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 Instagram messages with, uh, you find out they passed away, then you go on your channel and suggest that they took their own life without knowing what happened, and then you just read your DMs with them. Like, what possesses someone to do this? Fucking YouTube brain, I guess. I don't... What... Just looking through some of these things. Got so many comments. People are just gutted. Um, I can't even get to them. Oh my God. But yeah, just, you know, sad. Tama Hinckley says, how very sad, praying for his family and friends. Look, it's what it does. I think what you can do, what we can learn from this is to all reach out to people we know who do feel a bit glum or a bit down or a bit confused, a bit up and down. And check in on them. I think that would be appropriate. Um, I wish I'd uh, been more understanding of Doug. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was a bit standoffish, I think, even once we sort of made up, you know? Even when a year had passed. Uh and so, yeah, look, if there's anyone that you've had a bit of a thing with, it's just not worth it, you know? It's silly. And it's ego and status and hurt feelings. And like that's what I got from you in this video. Yeah, ego, status, and hurt feelings. And it's all nonsense. So, yeah, I send love and support out into the world. To those of you who are religious, I, I send those things to you as well. I, I mean that. Um... <laughs> and uh yeah 
I'll, I'll put something out later maybe about some vacuous things so we can try and just smile and shout about Meghan Markle or something. Um, I've just put out that, that Dawkins interview I did a while ago. We're doing a, a sort of watch again on my new channel, Heretics. Go check that out. Uh, that's on right now. Just type in Andrew Gold Heretics. I'll see some of you over there. Um, and yeah, I will, we'll keep on doing this. We'll keep fighting the good fight. So to uh, summarize, what we just observed was, uh, he had not really a falling out with uh, this guy, but this guy didn't want to uh, do any more content with him and, uh, found out the, uh, the guy in question was, uh, found dead in his apartment. And then uh, wildly speculated that the guy took his own life. And then read personal correspondence he had with the guy and uh, talked about how some of what the guy sent him was wrong and incorrect. And then uh, tried to blame Scientology for the, the guy's passing. Even though he was wrong about the, the reason the guy passed. Oh, and then he promoted his other channel. Fucking class fucking act. Class fucking act. <clears throat> I only have um, a couple things to say. Uh, Doug was a great interview. Uh, nice guy. Uh, was kind to Stephen Mango when people weren't, which was uh, admirable. And uh, if, you watch, if you go back and watch his videos, he had a poster of the dude behind him. So uh, RIP Doug, the dude abides. <laughs>